Uh, anyway, as you start towards the safe house door, a large four-legged form steps from around the corner. Hello, Dante! Oh, who's a good boy, eh, Dante? Oh, beautiful dog. Ah, bit of a low whimper. He knows, he knows. Oh, shit. Dante. I like the name Dante. That's quite cool. Dietrich shakes his head. Don't worry, boy. We'll look after you. <laughs> At the sight of Monica's dog, Amsel's eyes well up. He inhales, but can't quite catch his breath. He started whimpering about an hour ago, turned into a full-blown howl, wouldn't stop. Kept. He closes his eyes. That's when I realised something bad had happened. Looking down into those huge brown eyes, you see the intelligence and sadness. He lets out a small whine and rubs his head against you. Is that a wee sort of arcane mark on his head there? Oh, or maybe we've got some kind of kitsune here. There are animal spirits. Uh, totem spirits. Dog is a totem spirit in the Shadowrun universe. There are kitsunes and shapeshifters. That would be quite cool. Um, let's scratch Dante behind the ears. Dante leans into you and looks up mournfully, pressing his ribs against your leg. I guess the dog is going with you, Renzi Pants. Good, I will take a dog. I fucking love dogs. Uh, Amsel takes a ragged breath and releases it. Then a slow, melancholy smile plays across his face. Well, perhaps a part of Monica lives on in Dante. Return to the safe house when you finish with that one, my find. With a little luck, he can help us locate Green Winters, and we can get to the bottom of this. He stares at floor, and now I think we should all take a moment for Monica. I think you're probably right. However, I have still got things to steal. And there... Oh. Well, that's... Uh, useless. Nothing in there. I'll get to talking to you in a minute. Okay, Dante. Da, da, da. Nothing there. Okay, let's get talking to Igor. See what she has to say about the whole situation. Eagle glares at you, and you can taste the bile in her stare. She clearly still blames you for Monica's death. Something I can do for you, fearless leader? Uh, you're wrong about me, Eagle, and I intend to prove that to you. She stares at you for a moment, then looks away. Death to that with that Ramsey pants. Now please. Leave me alone. Nope, not yet. I've got things to fucking talk to you about. Um, we need to talk about Monica. Not right now, we don't. Don't push this on me, Ramsey Pants. One of these days, we're going to hash this out, and you can talk all you like about the clusterfuck that killed one of my best friends. But it won't be today. Ah, uh, you owe me an apology. I really should not be pushing my luck with this troll. Um, you want to step away from me, Runzy Pants, right now. Yeah, I've really upset her. Uh, is she going to talk to me anymore? Probably not at the minute. Okay, let's talk to Glory. Glory is beautiful in a waifish sort of a way. Her features are almost Elvis in their delicacy, but there's something cold about her that you find slightly unsettling. The fact that she's mostly metal, I think, is the cold thing about her. What's more unsettling is her chrome. Glory is rocking a heavy load out of cyberware. From head to toe, she looks to be composed more of plastic and metal than she is of skin and bone. In the shadows, individuals such as this are anything but uncommon. But Glory Cyberware is first generation. All of it. Bulky, invasive, practically museum pieces. This chrome was obsolete well before she was born. Runzy Pants! Glory shifts her gaze to you, but expression is cool and placid as always. Can I help you? 
Um, let's use a bit of astral perception, actually. I'm a mage. I've got the option. Let's do it. I think this is the first real skill ability I've been able to use. So let's not waste the chance. Uh, without shifting your attention away from glory, you allow your consciousness to partially slip into the astral plane. As your third eye opens... Tell you about my third eye. <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> anyway, um, open to the hidden world around you. You feel the familiar tingle of dormant senses awakening. The room that you're standing in slowly shifts to match its true nature. A lifeless expanse of grey, ugly and cold. Your own body, however, explodes into a swirling chaos of scintillating colour. Mm. <laughs> yep. As the astral plane shimmers into view, you focus on glory. You can still see her through your co corporeal vision. Her delicate frame, the bulky cyberware that breaks her silhouette, the faraway look in her eyes. But laid over the top of her physical body, there is a slight shimmer, her aura, damaged though it may be. The chrome that Glory is sporting has really done a number on her. Whatever she may have been before she underwent the night, her aura is now reminiscent of the room she's standing in, caught a cold, dead thing, mockingly sculpted into a facsimile of life. Somewhere within that mutilated aura, a shred of humanity awaits, but finding it, isn't going to be easy. Suddenly, Glory's body language changes. The look on her face is somewhere between suspicion and alarm. I got something in my teeth. You're staring. With an aura of this shredded by cyberware and surgery, it's going to take a minute to gather any useful information. Um, yeah. I'm going to be truthful with her. I'm going to keep reading her, 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 her but um, and be a little bit truthful with her. I imagine that we all do, yourself included, and yet you don't find me gawking at you. As Glory speaks, you continue to focus, sifting through the void left by a vintage chrome to find the tatters of her original essence. Finally, you catch a glimpse of colour, a flash of her true self, and behind it, something else. Ooh, the plot thickens. In a reflexive panic, your third eye slams shut. The hidden world of the astral plane disappears from view, but an afterimage of what you saw remains, twisting in your mind. Glory is, or was, magically active. The shred of her es essence that flitted past your vision left you sure of it. What's more, you'd wager that she had real power once, terrifying power, of a sort that you can only guess at. Now this is an interesting character development. All of this was surprising, but it was what you saw beneath her aura that chilled you to the core. There was something connected to Glory's essence. A metaphysical tether stitched into the fabric of her soul. It reminded you of a leash. You can't say for sure what was holding the other end, but whatever it was, it was enormous and ancient and cruel. That's a dragon. That is Firewing. Come on, you know it is. You know it's got to be Firewing. Uh, you can't shake the feeling that, as you looked into it, it stared back at you. Trembling, you find yourself back in the mundane world. Glory is still staring at you. Her neutral expression ever so slightly tinged with annoyance. Um, I've got a question for you, Glory, of the personal kind. I'm not a big on sharing sport. Personal reasons, you understand, I'm sure. The edge in your voice tells you that she's not interested in continuing this uh, conversation. I'm going to push. I still need to talk to you. Glory lets out a weary sigh. Ask you a question, but do it quickly. I have other things to do. Uh, what's with all 
The Vintage Chrome. It was cheap. It gets the job done. End of discussion. I don't think so. Seen a lot of street sounds in my time. You're right. There's more to it than I'm letting on, but I'm not interested in talking about it. Uh, I can't help but notice that you're withdrawn. That's my problem and none of your concern. Uh, yeah. Trust is earned, and I don't know you yet. Maybe later, when we get to know one another better, we can talk. For now, I prefer... Well, okay. Um... Well, we do need to talk about what I saw in your aura. I knew that this would happen. Look, my aura is my own business, and none of yours, understand? Uh, agree, but the thing that I saw was tied to your aura, and that very much is my business. It saw you? That's what you're worried about? A shrill laugh escapes Glory's lips. You'll be fine. Want to know a secret? It's been watching you for your entire life. You just never knew that it was watching until now. Some of us have bigger problems. For some of us, it takes a more direct interest. But I fixed that problem years ago. She gestures down into the vintage chrome that riddles her small body. The interest is still there, but it can't do anything about it anymore. Not unless I let it. So drop it, okay? She pauses for a moment. The hard expression on her face softens. Look, I understand that you're trying to help me, and I appreciate it. I do, but I'm not ready to talk about this yet. Maybe when we know each other, one another a little better, okay? Until then, just give me my space. I think that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Okay, well, I guess I am off to... Anything around here? Nope, we're off to... Find your man, I guess. Ho ho ho! Okay, so let's have a nosy about. Uh, oh, a dwarf! Female dwarf! The dwarvish tech vendor smiles at you with practice ease, her almond eyes twinkling with a glare from a dozen trig screens. She speaks in clipped, heavily accented German. Welcome to the data heaven! Can I help you with something? Um, yeah, I like exotic. Okay. Anything and everything. Need a new deck? Some software, perhaps? I'm your girl. She taps a painted fingernail against the moulded plastic of a data jar. Or maybe you're a rigger, like I am. Perhaps I can interest you in a new drone or two. Mmm... Okay, so we know where to go if we need some some decking gear. Nothing there of interest to a mage like myself, though. So let's nosy around. There's the soy cafe. Can't talk to you, can't talk to you. Let's pop in the soy cafe quickly. See what's going on. Hello, my friend. The voice comes from a man in the chair is as enormous as its owner. A deep, booming roar, dripping with unrestrained mirth. A, a bit of a, a Brian Blessed character, I feel. A fine day for soy calf, yes! Is that, is that Brian Blessed? I don't know. I think, I don't think I quite got the voice for Brian Blessed. A flip for dogs of war! Hawkmen! That's probably about the best Brian Blessed. I, I'd do it normally. I, I don't think I can do a Brian Blessed voice. Uh, yes, it certainly is beautiful. Uh, Atlug. Atlug Burgazi. This is the man from the back of the store. The voice of the shopkeep cuts you off. Don't mind the fool in the chair. He roars like a traumatized walrus stewing all day in his own sweat. <laughs> That's charming, that is. The man behind the bar glares at Goldschmidt. His upper lip curled in disgust. I tolerate him only because he takes his soy calf by the bucket. Goldschmidt responds with a raucous belly laugh. 
Apparently, he finds the shopkeeper's insults to be hilarious. Ah, Atlant, mein Freund. You're as quick-witted and as sharp-tongued as ever. I bow to you. Uh, well, obviously, it doesn't matter what I say here. Once again, the shopkeep cuts in. To bow to me, you would have to vacate your chair. The shopkeep claps his hands together, clasping them in front of his chest. I shall summon a team of determined young men and an ox to assist you with the task. With luck, you will be on your feet by nightfall. Goldschmidt smiles up at you, his small eyes glittering. Enough of this senseless bickering. You have approached me for a reason, yes? Tell me, what can Jan Goldschmidt do for you? Uh, why do you put up with the insults? I put up with them because they amuse me. The fact that they amuse me infuriates my dear friend Atluck, who in turn hurls more insults. Goldschmidt raises his soy cuff, cup in salute. And thus the cycle continues. It is two years now that I've been your customer, yes, Atluck? Two years of soy calf and strained patience, yes. And I remain happy. And Atluck makes money. An ideal business relationship. Yep, that sounds perfectly healthy. Until next time. Okay, well, let's speak to Atluck. Get on the ball. Uh, the man behind the counter looks right past you and at the dog following close behind. Dante, I will fetch his water dish. And perhaps a coffee for you, our friend here? Um, yeah. The Turk looks disgusted. Very well, a soy calf. He tells to himself. What's that? Okay. My man, uh, welcome, honoured offender. Welcome, and how can Buragazi serve you today? Would you like a cup of coffee? Uh, real coffee? Yes, for individuals of refined taste, I offer genuine bean coffee from my native Turkey. The cafe owner looks at you in the eye. The tone of his voice grows low and serious. This is the top shelf item, my friend, and not for the general public. Only those few discerning connoisseurs who can truly appreciate it. Uh, tell me about the Turkish coffee. It is hand-picked by my family in Turkey, a true delicacy of the sixth world. This was considered a luxury even before the awakening, when bean coffee was everywhere, every street corner, they say. Burgazi leans in close, lowering his voice to a conspiratorial whisper. Long hours in the shop has perfumed his body with the commingled scents of coffee, incense, and applewood tobacco. Trust me, if your coffee experience has been limited to soy calf, you must not deny yourself this opportunity. You will see God. Uh, all right, let's see how much. 50 new yen. Holy moly. I am going to do it. I am going to do it because I want to see where this takes me. Uh, oh, a mission item. Turkish coffee. Very good. Borogazi hands you ceramic travel cup, which he fills to the brim with dark steaming stewing liquid. The scent of it is intoxicating. Um, yeah, poor Amsel sends his regards. When he hears Amsel's name, the Turk's voice lowers and his accent becomes less exaggerated. His eyes take on a knowing look. Ah, very good. Please express to Herr Hamsel my appreciation of his patronage. If he needs any more catering jobs seen to in the near future, I'm always happy to provide. Uh, he tells me you're developing the menu for Hair Winters. Uh, yes, that one, I think. Of course, of course, Herr Amschel is too kind. Borogazi turns his head and calls into the back room. Cammy, come! A young woman bustles in from the back room. Her gum chewing is loud enough to hear over the noise of the coffee grinders. Borogazi spits something out in rapid fire Turkish. As you wish, Uncle. I will see to it right away. Kami offers you a shy grin, snaps her gum, and hurries back into the room that she came from. My girl Kami is arranging to make contact with the chef as we speak. 
This will likely take some time. My chef is a busy man. While we wait, I wonder if you would be so kind as to run a small errand for me. A trifle, really. I hate to trouble you. I'm embarrassed to even ask. But I would be most appreciative of your help. Uh, what is this trifle? Alan's voice lowers to nearly a whisper. The errand is simple. Hardly worthy of you. I have installed a number of data taps to Berlin's fibre optic network, as part of my civic duty, you understand. These taps provide free matrix access for all those that live in the Croix Bazaar. How very civic minded of you. Uh, in order to maintain their, how do I say it, anonymity, each tap's protocol buffer must be reset every few days. Okay, well, that's easy enough. Uh, yes, okay, so we can run with this. Just reset the taps and come back when you're finished. There should be three of them. First one's just outside in a metal box. Okay, uh, well, that's going to give us a good chance to have a look around the neighbourhood as well. I'm pretty interested in picking up... Oh, there we are. There's the first one. Well, that's easy enough. I'm pretty interested in picking up some magical gear. And look at this, Talus Kramer. And there's another guy there, David. I'll speak to David later. I want to buy gear. Uh, absinthe? He's a funky name. Okay, let's talk to you. Something about the young elf behind the counter makes you yeah, makes your breath catch in your chest. She's lovely to look at, but it's a strange kind of beauty. Her eyes are large and luminous and then possibly green. As she looks up at you, you can see that her irises are flecked with iridescent gold. Hello, and welcome to Al Algernon! Ah, yes, look, 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 there's Algernon. If you haven't played the Seattle campaign, Algernon is quite a big character and the main magic dealer for uh, the Seattle campaign. He is a big character. It's kind of nice to see him back again, actually. Um, uh, I wonder what part he's going to play. It's going to be good. Uh, perhaps I can help you with something, says Absinthe. Uh, as she looks up at you, her eyes fix on yours. A curious feeling of weightlessness fills your chest. Feels as though you're floating in a warm, calm sea. A gentle current pulls you closer to absence. Ah, uh, let's use the willpower to look away. And I gain a car. Hey, there's a karma point I can upgrade. I've now got six karma. So marshalling your strength, you manage to avert your gaze, breaking absence there. All at once, the floating sensation dissipates and your consciousness snaps back to its normal state. What was that? What happened? Uh, my fault and my apologies. Sometimes when I daydream, I bring others along for a ride. It was un unintentional, but no harm done. Uh, yeah, no harm done. Can I talk to you again? Yeah, she's got work to do, but I can talk to Algernon now. So let's talk to Algernon! This dude's all... Alright, he's a shaman, so I'll forgive him that. But the dude is all... Look at that throw for a start. Dude's a fucking legend. Greetings, young human. He yells voice as smooth as silk and rich as clotted cream. Something about him instantly puts you at ease. I am Algernon Halfdream, owner of this establishment. In my shop you will find the finest in magic paraphernalia. How may I serve you? Uh, I've got a question... Uh, what kind of magic do you practice? The true kind? Hmm, interesting answer. Uh, what's your story? Have you been in McCoy's Bazaar long? I have many stories. Stories of dancing spirits and raging dragons. Of unchecked magic and swarming chaos. All of these stories are true. Um, but he's always been here quietly peddling, peddling his wares. Hmm. Uh, what's the deal with your assistant? Absent is a friend, nothing more. She helps out around the shop when the fancy strikes her. She's nobody's assistant. What about her eyes? I believe they suit her personality. Uh, okay, well, let's see what you're selling, because you're obviously giving me no answers now. Oh, acid bolt. 
damage over time. Uh, AP1 cooldown. No cooldown. Only four damage. I've got that. Uh, Apprentice's outfit. Plus one willpower and plus one charisma. ka -ching! I take that. And we've got mana ball and mind wipe. Lightning bolt, stun bolt, and uh, longer cooldown. I'm going to take lightning bolt. And is that? That is apparently me. I have no more cash. Let's just see if there's anything else I can. Adept, uh, Shaman Spells, uh, da, 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 to see if there's anything, I've got Armour Bolt, Aim, I'm not really a buff character, we've got Dire Trick for buffs, uh, Flamethrower is quite interesting, quite high damage with that, but I think I prefer that Acid Stream. Oh, that's quite cool. But we're going to go with the uh, Acid Stream is good. But I'm going with Lightning Bolt. I think that's going to be my my thing. Any consumable stuff? Alright. Well, there we go. we got a new spell there. I'm going to uh, secure Mage Clothing. I don't like the look of it, but it will do the job. I get plus one willpower out of it and plus one charisma, so that's not bad. Oh, there we go. I thought it had bugged out then. Uh, okay, well, that's pretty cool. And I've got that extra charisma point. So let's have a nosy. Uh, and we will put it in that. There we go. Willpower 6. Technically 7 with the uh, armor. There we go. Magic is 6. Willpower 7. Spellcasting 5. Happy with that. Happy with that. I think we're doing pretty well here. I'm going to leave it here for now, guys. I've got some new threads. Uh, the story has deepened a little bit. Uh, but we're going to have to have a nosy around the town, I think, and um, that's going to take a, probably a little while because I do want to explore it properly and have a look around. So we're going to leave it there. Uh, as always, if you like this, please do rate, comment, and subscribe. Uh, please do leave your, your criticisms, your feedback, anything that you want to discuss in the comment section. I do read through it. I do take it on board. Uh, I, I know I've said it before in videos, but I really do value your feedback. It's probably the, the single most valuable bit I get from you guys about how the videos are doing, how much you're enjoying them, you know, what things I can do better, what more I can do to, to make it an enjoyable video view for you. So, uh, like I said, please do uh, give us a, a thumbs up. If you liked it, give us a, a comment, subscribe to the channel. All that stuff really helps me out. Thanks very much, guys, and I will uh, see you for the next episode where we will explore the Clays Bazaar.